Her lips which whisper like reeds on the wind, wet with moisture sprung from a well deep within, whispers like the petals of an iris, the reedy blossom which weathers and is not trodden down for long. Line 1253. For just like his sisters who hung with the misters, this ungulate proxy with the two extra arms, for which to expunge, not so to give great big hugs. To many there were to not cause alarm. Noth would abase with reverent distaste of Ixus, for to be he but a failure. Come and you will see what evil can be, skirt miltless in this vibrant regalia. Pathetic flirtation, what mean affectation. Laugh you not in his face, or he will cry. A visitor to bury, of legs for to query, accosted your grace that worm when he dived. To you did he pray when fell he that day, accosted Catania of the presence there in her mind. What image demeaned, perhaps but a dream, of the question no answer was ventured in kind. Not an equerry be unto you then was he, spat lucidly, accosted she of her nightmare. What dream, what demon to smote, aloud had she spoke, she accosting a demon that just was not there. What fortress she to find in the back of her mind, what refuge now sought from this penetrating lot? Security divest by this lucid unrest, she withdrew in her mind to spaces long forgot. A moment for the chance, but one far away glance, knowing already that she was outclassed. But wanting she to wake from this dream spade abate, the mark of Aralex he nigh well unsurpassed. An heir to be known, she chilled to the bone. No goblin's ether this, nor a dreamer's ferment. What vague recognition bemoan benediction, bereave she of her benefactor benignant, a bellicose rile, a belligerent denial, a silent assessing as weighed she the dangers. Dragon in season? This must be the reason. The divine were inclined to set about rangers. Jump she to conclusion, an upright conclusion, where bled from the head she conscientiously led. What head for to gash, high-mindedly rash. With the bunk up above, it had collided her head. Upright to deem, thus escaped she her dream. Foggedly dogged, grasped, wanting for he. Fear to absolve, thus consigned her resolve. Consummate silence, what dragon there be. What breakfast found she, near sundown it be. What dreams fear to ward, thus fell to her sword. What nightmares to chase, but supper to face. Sinuous and sinister, her dream spade ignored. With feast thus engorged, the cavern implored, asleep she for three days in the bunk where she lay. No time for to take, she was now awake, fettered by fever no longer today. Her armor resized, she had since surmised. It glistened and gleamed, feather light it seemed. Untarnished by rust, though tight in the bust, exemplary craftsmanship, what pride with it beamed. With chasm to dare, a spell was prepared, sorceress betwixt words for to bewitch. She garbed for adventure, time not for to lecture, had Claudia engrossed in what spells for to stitch. Of amber to beckon, a sword for to reckon, daggers secreted, such should security implore. Green it was dyed, she wore a thick boiled hide, fells blows for to thwart and foes to deplore. A sword he did carry with dagger to parry, or to stab had dread, who with magic did dabble. Armor and pack and with tools not to lack, a box for to kindle and spells for to addle. Barding she wore, her father did deplore, that no daughter of his should ever see battle. In the garb of a man, or with spear in hand, pronounced he once when drunk, and the rafters did rattle. With tack from a horse, in sword for discourse, in chainmail and leather, and an odd dwarven helm, ere er to abide for to be a good ride, as Merelda thought nothing from father's fair realm. Ever he a frown were Derek from town, his metal yet met, brought he rope and a net, wise to device his demeanor like ice, what blue of his eyes and his blood for to let. Ruddy and pale with his sword and chainmail, what qualm for to quell before he foes fell. Raven hued was his hair, pitch would compare, darkly determined one's doom would he spell. Loris of Drachmar, though slighter by far, was like in his appearance and manner. 
Though skilled as a sage, this unlettered mage shined bright as a much better planner. The spell prepared for Morpheus to dare the drop shaft, for he was tall and quite broad. Not quite condescension, this ounce of prevention, or put down, this diminution to laud. Fell fate to deplore, Feline did implore, for her brother Gangor, whose sword she did trust. He lanky and lithe, fell foes for to scythe, Gangor the barbarian, but a must. Now feeling quite safe was Jen of the Waif, of dangerous to brave for to get ahead. She her own hero, questing to zero, aspired once more, having room in a bed. Sorceress of means, least not though was Eve, last neither, though what vague presence was felt. Penel penultimate, perhaps, presence to lapse, gut quibbles, mused she, as donned she her belt. Ill error omen, darkly foreboding, of or yesterday's pork up for an encore. Still non compliant, her stomach in riot, the, this vague unease best this vague unease felt best to be ignored. What shade to deplore they made for the door and to the market alley by midnight. They made for the shaft as night reached its haft, no shadows to dance or were rats to fight. The stone which they'd mark they found in the dark by letter to fetter on their egress. A stone for to pry and spell for to scry to better and fetter, path to digress. Less girth for to prize with giant downsized, descended they down the narrow drop shaft. Plummet in duck, they pounced upon the muck, then onward to the stone arches collapse. A brief pause for light, lit torches for sight, as shadows did dance across the cut stone. Near three paces wide, sheer drops either side. What cascade below? Perhaps best not be known. And I'll stop there. We'll pick it up with line 1307 next time. Um, yeah, a lot, lot, lot I wanted to say tonight, but I'm just going to leave it at that and just pick it up and uh, get uh, book five done. Uh, thank you for listening, if you are, and hope everybody has a good night and a happy holiday.